humans do something that nobody else does. I think the only answer we have for that is cooking. We're the only ones who transform radically their food before they eat. So the net result is that when you eat something like a carrot or a potato in its raw original form, you might actually get only about a third of all the calories that you could possibly get. But if you cook it beforehand, then you actually get 100% of the calories. So you, you realize then that um, pre-processing the food that you eat, which goes by this generic name of cooking, not only cuts down tremendously the amount of time and muscular effort, really, that you have to put into getting those calories, um, but it also gives you many more calories per unit time, right? So now go back in human evolution and you realize that three to four million years ago when humans, well, when pre-humans, let's say, first stood erect, um, they also about that time they developed the first technology, which is stone tools. And stone tools are so useful exactly because they can be used for cutting skin and cutting meat and chopping meat and, and roots and mincing roots. So you can actually use that new technology to transform the food that you eat. So that was a first, let's say, technological revolution, I like to call it, that started changing our evolutionary history. So add to that, maybe between 1.5, a million, maybe a million years ago, add to that the actual control of fire to modify foods. And you find yourself at the very beginning of that steep ascent in the size of the human brain or the size of the brain in our ancestors. And what we show, and I explain in this book, is that had it not been for something as transformative as cooking in how many calories our ancestors got, we could not be here. We could not afford the brain that we have. How did we get here? Because if you do the same math that we did for the great apes, you realize that if gorillas are already at the limit, if they already live at the that energetic edge, let's say, and they eat about eight hours per day every single day, our ancestors, to first get a brain similar to ours, they would have had to spend close to nine and a half hours per day eating. Imagine your life every single day, all the time that you dedicate to educating yourself, to working, to doing fun things. Uh-uh, forget about that. You have to spend all that time just looking for food and eating. And once you're done eating, you're going to have to start all over again. Honest, I honestly never looked at my kitchen again the, the same way because you, you realize how something that appears so trivial can actually transform the evolutionary history of the of not just a single species, but the world through the actions of that species. But I think we forget too easily that we're born absolutely incapable. We're born with, uh, there's all the possibilities in those neurons in that little brain, but you have to learn pretty much everything that you do. So those 16 billion neurons, they give, they give you the biological capability to achieve a lot, but to actually turn those capabilities into actual abilities, that takes learning. And that takes learning that benefits, that builds on all the technological achievements of your parents before you, of their parents before them, of all the generations that came before.